Okay, I can do this again. What's another two hours? I'll be fine. <laughs> it's Sarah welcome back to another video here on my channel hope you guys are doing well I just filmed a video we're rocking and rolling with another one right off the bat so same background same time of day same outfit today we're diving into season two of the originals and I will tell you right now I'm not bored anymore okay I'm enjoying it so far somebody told me that this and maybe I'm remembering your comment wrong okay so before I act like I'm mad at you I'm not this is a joke I'm joking I'm, I'm kidding right I remember somebody saying, I'm so glad you're liking season one. This is really where the witch stuff pops off and then it kind of dies down. So far, I would disagree with that comment. I would say the witch stuff has amped up a bit more aggressively than I could have ever expected. Let's get into it. So we open with Rebecca and the baby safe in a house somewhere together and she basically like recaps season one in the form of a bedtime story and she's like the evil sorceress and the magical beast they attacked the king but don't worry the princess was taken away to safety. We see Elijah stepping in as like head of the historical society which if I'm not mistaken isn't that what he was pretending to be back in TVD too is this just a habit of it do you think he really is maybe he really does do that I could see that being an actual hobby of his now that I'm saying it out loud anyway he steps in and is like this building that the wolves want to buy is historical and needs to be protected and I refuse to let it be sold into Francesca's hands so sorry Klaus throws a tantrum destroys all his art, like rips up his canvases, and Elijah picks one up and is like, mm, I guess we're gonna have to call this your white period. Klaus is like, if you don't let me start killing people, I'm gonna lose my mind, okay? I'm this close to having an actual breakdown and it's gonna be your fault. Turns out Elijah has been looking for the 12 rings that were made because remember, they're still linked to Klaus right now. So each full moon, Klaus is like drained and they haven't gone after the werewolves yet because they don't know who has the rings and they don't wanna lose them. So Elijah's like, I found the last one, brother. And now we can make our move. Haley's not been doing well, right? Like she's been out in the bayou living as a wolf. She's not, she's not doing great. Marcel and Cammy are banging. Again, you know, good for them, I guess. I just, he was just with Rebecca. Like they're at least keeping it casual now though. Like things were feeling pretty serious at the end of season one. And now when they like go to separate in the morning, Cammy's like, we can't make plans, right? Like we're not gonna go on dates. We're keeping this casual. When we meet up, we meet up. That's all it is. He's worried about Klaus and he thinks he's hiding something because he is and Marcel was compelled so he doesn't know everything. So he's like, why hasn't he made a move against the werewolves? It just doesn't make sense. We also learn here that Davina is back in high school and like not part of the coven anymore at all, which makes Marcel really proud but confuses the hell out of me. Cause I'm like, what do you mean? she just isn't going to meetings like how she still lives in the town with them and all their magic's connected to each other how did she leave we cut to Davina buying Icelandic folk music from the record store and we see this guy the scream I scrumped when he walked in I was like oh I didn't realize it was happening in episode one I didn't realize it was it was right now. Ollie shows up and flirts with Davina, but she's not really having any of it. And then the werewolves descend and it turns out the shopkeeper Joe is a vampire. So they attack him, but Davina helps him get out. Esther is in Cassie's body. She's not doing anything about Davina because she's not part of the coven anymore. Again, what do you, what does that mean? How do you just break that connection? I don't, it seems like that was really hard to do in y'all's coven and you're just you're just letting her go. Francesca throws a fit over this though. We find out that Vincent is Finn. This is Finn. They're plotting against Elijah and Klaus. It's kind of unclear on what they wanna do, right? Like the whole thing where it's like, we're gonna punish them. We're gonna purify them. We're gonna ruin the family. I don't, I don't know what she wants this time. Last time she wanted to kill them. 
it feels like maybe that's what she wants this time too. It's a little confusing, but Finn is like all in. He's like, yes, mother, let's do this thing. The werewolves are stalking Cammy for Francesca and she's miserable under their watch. She goes over to the Michelson compound to see Klaus and it's really giving Beauty and the Beast vibes. Like she's wandering around, all the furniture's covered, everything's turned off, there's no fires in the fireplaces. And he is like stalking her, like she's moving around and he's like, staying out of her line of sight but like following her through the house and moving before she can see him. Elijah then like drops in on her and is like hey girl Klaus doesn't want to see you okay if he wanted to talk to you he would you need to leave you're trespassing on private property get out of our house. There are apparently rumors going around that Marcel killed the baby not the wolves so I think they did that so that everybody is sort of on edge and they don't know who Klaus is really mad at. Uh, but Cammie is upset because she's like, you guys know Marcel wouldn't do that. He doesn't kill children, let alone babies. And she begs them to work with Marcel because otherwise the wolves are going to take over the city and everything's going to fall apart. Josh is bringing people to Marcel so that they can like make their vamp army, but he's not just like turning people left and right. He's basically doing this test. He basically compels them into like half forgetting about where he's brought them so that when they go back to their regular lives, if they're strong enough and they want it bad enough, they'll find a way back to him anyway. Klaus shows up and like interrupts this. Elijah, who I feel the need to tell you has not been shaving. He's scruffy in these first few episodes. He's cleaning up the nursery and Haley comes home and gets in a screaming match with him over it because she's like, how dare you touch my child's things? I'm not ready to put the room away. Michael is vibing to the Icelandic folk music and dreaming of killing Davina. She is trying desperately to figure out how to unlink the sire line between Klaus and all of her people because Marcel and Josh especially are part of that. Once she figures that out, she's like, I'm gonna let you go, babe and you're gonna be able to go kill him. Klaus goes over to Marcel to tell him that the white oak stake is missing and that's why he's hesitating because he doesn't know who has it. Remember, Michael stole it at the end of the last episode when he was like lurking in the house. Joe, the music store owner, shows up and is like, hey guys, I've been outed. The werewolves now know I'm a vampire, so I'm done with that, I guess. Klaus realizes that the wolves must not have the stake or they would have come after him already. So now he wants to go hunting. They send Joe over to the wolves to tell them that Klaus thinks they do have the stake which sends the wolves to Cassie to get her to look for it. While that's happening, Haley, Klaus, and Elijah are gonna like pick off the rings to give Klaus back his strength. Francesca stays home in her house, safe from the vampires, cause you know like they can't come in. So she's hiding while all the other wolves fight, which really bothers Ollie because that's not how alphas are supposed to be. Marcel takes on the wolves in that building that at the beginning of the episode, Elijah stopped the wolves from buying. So he put Wolfsbane in the fire system and they all start burning and then he takes the rings. At the compound, Haley takes on more. Elijah goes straight to Francesca's house and kills her security team outside. So Klaus gets most of his strength back and then ends up killing more wolves with paintbrushes, which is great for him because he made a joke at the beginning that he wanted to paint with his enemy's blood. So like, dreams come true, I guess. Haley takes Ollie's ring, but doesn't kill him. At Francesca's house, Elijah comes up to the door and is like cleaning the blood off his hands and the men freak out, but Francesca's like, don't worry, he can't come in. What's he gonna do? And I'm like, baby girl, I watched Klaus fire multiple projectiles through windows and doors. I would move away from the edge of the house. But yeah, Elijah is just cleaning his hands and he goes, mm, can't I? Yeah, he had her house entered into like the historical society situation, which makes it technically public property. So he just strolls on inside. Her smile drops, but do you think she runs? No, she just stands there looking at him. I'm like, girl, you need to go. You need to go fast. Elijah then goes to Klaus, who still isn't quite at full strength, which means that Francesca's not dead yet. We see her running in a car, but then Haley stops her and drags her outside. Josh comes to Marcel and is like, hey, the wolves got Joe, what do we do? And Marcel's like, oh, nothing. Like, that sucks, but you know, it is what it is. We were at war, Joe missed fighting, now he's dead, I don't know. And that really upsets Josh because he's like, it feels like you make all this talk about like loving your guys and standing up for your guys. And yet you just let things like that happen to us. Like what the hell, man? 
I love that Josh at least calls out how stupid this is because like it is really dumb. It, it's really dumb. Y'all just blood feud constantly. You make these speeches about power and greatness and then you go back on them. Loyalty is important sometimes and then sometimes it isn't. It's just, I'm tired. We cut to Haley tearing the nursery apart. She says she killed Francesca, but it didn't help and now she almost feels worse than she did before. Some people are cut out for revenge situations and then some people just aren't. And I feel like we always learn that too late in these TVD situations. Elijah explains that her new emotions as a hybrid are gonna take some time for her to learn how to deal with. She says, I killed nine wolves tonight, okay? They used to be my people, which makes me no better than a vampire. Also, you don't even want me anymore because I'm so broken and also half vampire now. And you were into me when I was a human. She says she's not a mother anymore. Now she's a monster. Davina runs into the cute guy again. His name is Caleb. I need you to know it's spelled with a K though, because that is important. Klaus is spiraling now about how this is all his fault and he feels really bad about it. And I'm like, I wish you'd had that realization in the last episode when Marcel was telling you it was his fault. Cause it would have been really nice if you'd said that then. But Elijah instead is like, oh, don't worry about it, brother. You've been trying to ruin our lives for centuries. What's another few months? We can deal with it. Also in this moment, Elijah is doing the magic to destroy the rings, which I just found so attractive. He's got a little cauldron. The rings are in it. He's burning them. He's putting water on them and they boil. And I, it was great. He tells Klaus that he really needs to try to help Haley because Klaus and Haley understand the grief they're going through better than anybody. And as much as he would like to help her, he knows that she probably really just needs to talk to Klaus. Cammie tells Marcel that she actually can't see him anymore. <laughs> So that relationship's over, I guess. Um, she says that basically she can't keep getting pulled into supernatural shit. She's trying to go to school to help humans and that's what she needs to focus on and he lets her go. Haley and Klaus talk and it is really sweet. He tells her that he knows she's in a lot of pain right now, but he's personally been alive for so long that he knows that the pain kind of just fades away and only the really good moments linger. So this will pass, it's just gonna take time. She knows that she's not gonna be happy again until she has hope back. And he's like, well, that is gonna happen happen. He wants her to help him reunite the wolf packs because he's like, you're still their royalty. They're still gonna follow you. And he reminds her that she's part of his family now, no matter what. And so they're gonna take on their enemies together. Finn, who's in Vincent's body, right? He is now Cammy's sponsor at school. So they killed the other guy and he took his place. And then Caleb shows up get wrecked. It's actually Cole. Oh my God. Turns out Esther is maybe not trying to kill them because she says it's time to start putting down roots. They have a family reunion to plan. What do you, what, I need to know more. All right, we got a flashback. It's Spain, 1702. Elijah and Klaus come home looking for Cole. He has been having a wild time and there are bodies everywhere. Michael is following them and he is not making it easy for them to stay hidden. He says that he doesn't really care because Michael is after Klaus, not the rest of them. So he's just gonna stay behind this time and let them run without him. And then they dagger him so that they can take him by force. In this moment, he swears that he's gonna come back and make Klaus suffer. Cut to the present, where Cole is in that witch's body, just wandering around, being an absolute menace. I'm not even gonna tell you what he did to this poor girl in the street, but all I could think was maybe he is the 16 year old in the family. I see it now. Elijah comes home and finds a dead body in the courtyard. He follows the trail of blood into the bathroom, where there is another dead body, just just chilling there, right? Haley's in the tub, having eaten these people. She gets up, just straight naked in front of him and is just like standing there and he gives her a towel and it's so awkward. I'm like, why do people turn into this when they get turned into vampires? Oh my God. So yes, yeah, she's like this close to being humanity off Haley. Like she has lost it and is just killing people as punishment for them having killed the baby. Elijah's getting pretty stressed about how ruthless she's getting, even though Klaus is like, mm, it seems like she's having fun and handling her emotions. I don't think we should mess with her. Elijah insists that they really need to get her with the wolves like immediately or they're gonna lose her to the vampire bloodlust. Marcel's new favorite vamp in training is Miss Gia. 
love her already. Elijah sees Marcel talking to these new vampires and it gives him a flashback of him trying to teach young Marcel how to play piano. And it's really sweet. Elijah's good with kids. He clearly had a bond with Marcel. Klaus did not like it, even though, reminder, Klaus is the reason why they adopted him in the first place. Klaus is just so jealous that if it ever looks like a person he has affection for likes anybody else and equal to or slightly more than him, he gets really upset. This is around the time that they killed Rebecca's boyfriend, the governor's son. Remember that in season one, he threw him off the balcony and Elijah's like, well, yeah, you threw him off the balcony. No wonder she's pouting and she doesn't want to talk to you. And Klaus is like, anyway, I got bored and I woke up cold. In the present, Marcel and Elijah kind of slightly team up together. Elijah is like, if you have Davina do a tracking spell to help me find the white oak stake so I know where it is, <clears throat> then I will let you keep training these vampires and I won't kill them. Davina's having a really hard time unpacking Esther's spells because Esther's really old and really powerful and her book is confusing. Michael wants to help her with it, but she doesn't trust him enough, so she's trying to do it on her own. He's just getting annoyed that it's taking so long. Cole figures out that Davina's hiding something in the attic. They've been like lightly talking and like he's definitely drawn to her, but also using her, so it's complicated. Esther, as Cassie, has been building up like a moonlight ring army with the werewolves to get them to follow the witches. Klaus takes Haley to the bayou and it is empty now, but he says he can tell that the wolves are here, he can track them, and he wants her to learn how to do it too to like embrace both sides of her gift. She ends up kind of having a little breakdown with him and admitting that like she's falling apart. They sort of bond in this moment for real which is what they should have done before but now it's like actually happening where he admits that like he is sad too but he's like a quiet griever ironically so he hasn't really been talking about it with anybody. We get another flashback of Cole and Klaus being absolute freaking menaces together. Elijah's getting stressed because the bodies are starting to pile up again and he's like, we are going to get caught. But Klaus is just pitching a fit and trying to like have fun with Cole because he's so upset that Marcel and Elijah are close. Elijah is like, if you don't knock it off, I'm gonna have to send Marcel away because it's not safe for him to be in the house with you acting like this. And Klaus stands up from the table and is like, damn, if you're that worried about it, let's just put Cole back in his box. And Cole is like, I'm your actual brother, what the hell? Marcel and Davina meet up so he can ask her to do that spell for Elijah. It's cute though, they like kind of debrief on stuff initially. Davina doesn't want to do the spell because she doesn't trust the boys. Elijah shows up and is like, it would really be in your best interest if we worked together. But Davina refuses, like to his face, is like, get wrecked, I'm not gonna help you, bye leaves and Marcel is like I told you to let me handle it what's wrong with you and Elijah's like I had a theory and now my theory's been proven she wasn't afraid because she already knows where the stake is with her Haley finds Ollie leading the pack in the middle of the woods she knows they're not gonna follow her and sure enough like when they get close enough for them to see her and Klaus they like move away and kind of circle Ollie Ollie says he would rather die than follow Haley, so Klaus is like, okay, no problem. He goes to kill him, and Haley's like, no, what the heck, don't do that, Klaus, stop. And this is where Klaus has the line where he's like, you see, there's your queen, powerful, fearless, and unlike me, merciful. And then he dips to go find Cassie and leaves Haley with the wolves. Elijah is planning to force Davina into helping him. And Marcel is like, buddy, this is why nobody likes you. Don't you understand that? Ooh, we get another flashback of baby Marcel, this time with Cole. He has compelled a troop of actors to perform Shakespeare with them, but they're like actually killing each other on stage. One of them doesn't do it well enough, so Cole just like kills him in front of Marcel. Also, Marcel has blood on his mouth. Elijah comes in, sees this happening, and is like, what is going on? Cole is like, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I thought we were raising him to be a little vampire in our dysfunctional vampire family. Is that not what we're doing? Anyway, I already gave him my blood, so feel free to kill him anytime you want. Elijah is like, you can't mess with him. What's wrong with you? Klaus steps in and like gets in between them and Cole is like, ha ha, I knew family was more important. And then Klaus daggers him and is like, yeah, and I told you Marcel was part of the family, you fool. Klaus goes to the graveyard to look for Cassie and gets swarmed by all the new werewolves. 
Cassie comes out and is like, Niklaus, I've been waiting for you. So they go into the crypt and she makes him some tea. She explains that the wolves and the witches have always had a connection with each other because they're the mortals in the supernatural equation, right? So they hate the vampires as a team. So working with them is a natural thing and it makes sense and it's smart. She says that that's the real reason why the vampires hate them all so much because they're like really living beings and the rings help level the playing field. Cole is out on a date with Davina. They bond over having mommy issues and this is when he says for the first time, oh yeah, my mom, she's actually the reason why I stopped practicing magic for so long. Yeah, like over a thousand years, babe. It's been a long time. He tells her that the courage she had to step away from the coven should be celebrated, not ridiculed. And then Marcel calls, so she has to step away. Ben shows up and is like, if you don't start getting the answers that we want out of her, we're gonna do this my way. And Cole is like, what are you gonna do? Bore her to death? Which is so real. Like Finn from TVB gave us nothing, gave us nothing repeatedly. He was so boring, he barely had any lines. I don't even remember what his voice sounded like, even when he was with Sage. He didn't do anything. But now this man playing him, giving us everything he's got, right? Finn is ruthless. Finn is scary. Finn makes sense as the oldest Michelson brother. I believe it now. I'm like, I get it. I see where Elijah and Klaus got it from. Where was that in TVD? the werewolves come and Cole gets like knocked behind the bar and hits his head really hard but he's like alive but he's mortal now so his head hurts. She gets overpowered and she ends up freeing Michael and like calling him in to like handle it for her so he shows up tears through the werewolves. Cole sees him and is like oh my god but obviously Michael doesn't know that that's Cole looking at him. One of them grabs Davina and like shakes her a little bit too hard and the bracelet falls off and so Michael's free and he literally looks at Davina dead in the eyes and goes oh no what an interesting turn of events. <laughs> Don't worry though Elijah shows up and saves her but then he is fighting Michael all of a sudden, who is not supposed to be there in the flesh. He nearly gets staked, but then Davina gets her bracelet back and orders him to go back to the attic. There was an issue with my storage. We ran out of memory for a second, so the lighting changed. I'm sorry, we're gonna keep going. Klaus tells Cassie that he hates chamomile tea because it's the kind of tea that his mom used to make and he hates his mother because she's the one who turned them into vampires against their will and then decided, you know, I don't like that I made them vampires and made it her job to kill them. This whole time, Cassie's been calling him Niklaus instead of Klaus and he tells her that he finds it insulting because she acts like they're close when they aren't. So he wants to know if Cassie's under Esther's influence. And Cassie's like, oh, she doesn't have to speak through me, okay? I know exactly what she would say. She'd tell you to go to your room for being so rude. And he like rears up at her and I'm like, mm, yikes. But whatever he sees in her eyes freaks him out enough that he does not fully attack and she gets away. Klaus goes home to Elijah and he's like, I'm telling you, I looked into that little girl's eyes and I saw her mother, okay? Let me rip her head off, I'm prepared. But Elijah is like, our mom is so good at possession, right? So if you do that, she's just gonna body hop into a person. At least right now, we know Know whose body she's in. Klaus is like, okay, then there's only one question left. Which parent are we killing first? Haley brings home wolves from her pack and tells them to just pick a bedroom. Klaus is like, mm, didn't know we were bringing in strays. And she's like, this is literally what you told me to do. Also, Ollie is going to go to Cassie and pledge his loyalty, but then come to me and tell me everything. We get a nice flashback of Elijah saying goodbye to Cole as they put him in the coffin. He basically like apologizes for it coming down to this and he says that he knows that Marcel and Klaus need each other. Like Klaus needs to be with Marcel. He keeps him kind of sane and nice which is an interesting take on their relationship. So he says that they're all gonna have to make sacrifices in order to make sure that happens. And then we cut to Elijah like driving a wedge between himself and Marcel and like being horrible and basically like pushing Marcel back to Klaus, which sucks 
because that's why now in the future Marcel and Elijah are fighting so much. Now we see him in the present doing the same thing to Haley so that she goes to the wolves instead of confiding in him. Cole goes after Finn thinking that he set up the attack because that's definitely how it sounded but no that was actually Cassie. So then Cole is like screw this screw you I'm not doing anything you say anymore do you see this bump on my head mom it's gonna take months to heal because I'm a freaking human now and then she grabs him with magic and like drags him to the floor and is like that's right because I put you in a body and I can take you back out of one and so he gives in and is like yeah you're right mom um I'm gonna do what you want never mind but he lies and doesn't tell her that Michael's back really sad because this is one of those moments where we see her like actively abusing him with magic and then like a moment later like cradling his face and like calling him a good boy and I just I can't stand these parents. Marcel tells Elijah that he needs to know what team he's on before he decides if he's gonna work with him or not. And Elijah is like, I don't do teams, which is a damn lie. We all know your team, the Klaus. Like, but since Klaus is already working with the wolves, it's very easy for Elijah to be like, okay, I should work with the vampires. So Marcel turns Gia fully in front of him and is like, let's see if you do better with her than you did with me. Esther sends breakfast to the Michelson compound and underneath the cloche that has the note saying like, I'm coming over for dinner at eight, you're hosting, surprise. There's a bird in there, okay? So the bird motif begins. We get a flashback of little Klaus hiding in the woods. Elijah comes home and is like, mom, he's hiding in the woods again because dad was mean to him. So Esther goes out to check on him. She tells him to not be afraid of Michael because she will be with him always and forever, which I actually personally hate that that phrase came from her and not the siblings themselves. Really upset about that. Haley and Klaus are like, we're team kill Cassie tonight at dinner. And Elijah once again is like, if we do that, she will body hop and then we will lose her, be rational. So Marcel has a second witch that works for him named Lenore. Um, he makes Elijah go with Gia to go see her because he wants Elijah to have to work with Gia. And the night before he just left Gia in the street. So Ollie meets with Vincent who gives him a ring. So now he's tied to Cassie and he says, but that means that he has to give things to Cassie in return and those things start tonight. Haley wants to know why Esther hates Klaus so much because she had six kids. So like she must have had a maternal gene. And Klaus is like, actually, there were seven of us. One of them died really young and then Henrik died and we knew about Henrik from TVD. So they really just slip that seventh Michelson in. Just surprise, there's a seventh one. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it was pretty smooth because had I not been like, aware that it was gonna happen and that I think it's kind of stupid, um, I would have probably not noticed. Like they just sneak it right on in. He says that his siblings always said to each other, oh, mom doesn't hate us. She hates what she did to us. She's just mad at herself for what she turned us into, which is like accurate, but also it doesn't make it any less hurtful. And Klaus is just kind of sick of pretending. Gia and Elijah go to Lenore. I love her, okay? One of my favorite witches we've seen so far. She says, oh, I'm not helping you with anything. Stay off my side of the river. Elijah is like, I could make the issues with your taxes go away if you want, because I'm with the historical society. And she's like, yeah, actually, that sounds great. Go get me a snake, please. So they go off to get those ingredients. Actually, he says that Gia has to go get it because she, he wants her to work on compulsion, having not shown her how to do compulsion at all. The second they're gone, Vincent comes in. They obviously don't know it's Finn. So he goes up to her and is like, you're gonna help me instead. And he's really creepy. Klaus asks for a necklace that he gave Marcel when Marcel was 11. It's a little uh, cord with a bird on it. Turns out Esther made that necklace for Klaus because she wanted to make sure he was always safe. She like spelled it and he thought it was a protection necklace which is cute because then he gave it to Marcel. It's so sweet that Marcel kept it. He has like a little trinket shelf, not unlike mine over here, but his is loaded up with like relics from his multiple vampire lives and in a carved wooden box that I have to assume Klaus also made, the necklace is in there. It's so cute. Cassie and Finn leave for dinner, but not before he tells her that he would be more than happy to open Lenore up to new possibilities. Who is this man? This is not the same man. 
I just, Finn was not this ruthless and batshit insane and ready and willing to torture people in TVD. He was a little quiet, meek mouse of a boy. Like, what the hell? He ends up making Ollie do the torturing since Ollie got the ring. So now Ollie's gonna have to torture Lenore. But thankfully, Ollie calls Haley and is like, they got a witch in the crypt and they want me to torture her. Come help mom. And so Haley is like, I'm gonna go handle that. And then hopefully me saving her will like let her do the spell for me. Elijah is like, I don't think that's such a good idea. And she's like, you haven't talked to me in weeks. You don't get to be protected now, buddy. I'm going. Klaus sees this and is like, my brother, what is going on? G is freaking out with Marcel because she stole the snake instead of compelling herself the snake. So she feels like she's a failure vampire. Elijah doesn't like her. He's never gonna like her. And Marcel is like, you are gonna make him want to fix you because that's what Elijah does. And he's like, once we get him on our side through you, he's gonna wanna take care of all the vampires because he's a little martyr and he loves adopting children. Klaus and Elijah are dressed and waiting and they're expecting Cassie, but Finn shows up first. He says Elijah's suit can't hide his self-loathing and Klaus is nothing but a scared little boy Elijah is like, um, how dare you speak to me and my brother in such a way? But Klaus is immediately like, oh my God, Finn? Klaus says, it's been a long time, but guys, I fear it, it hasn't been that long. He died in season three, right? Season two or season three? It's not been that long. It's maybe been two years. Three years? No, it has, can't have been three years. It's maybe been two. Haley shows up to save Lenore and Ollie is like, you can't just get her out of here like they're gonna be so mad at me for letting her go and Haley's like unless it looks like somebody broke in and stole her so then she gets to beat the shit out of Ollie which is funny and then they free Lenore real awkward time at the dinner table where Finn is like yes yeah, so I've been um in the coffin for 900 years because I guess he was only out in TVD for like a little like a hot minute and all he did was work with uh, Esther and then get killed by Matt, right? Yeah. But he was in the coffin for 900 years before that because they daggered him and were like, you're annoying and just put him away for centuries. And then he got out in TVD. <laughs> he wants to know what they've done while he was sleeping. He's like, have you contributed to science? Have you done anything for humanity as a whole? What are you doing for nature? Global warming's still a thing, isn't it? And they're like, you know, buddy, we don't really have anything to say to you because in case you've forgotten, the last time we were together, you helped mommy do the unlinking spell that then almost killed all of us. So we're not exactly close. He starts giving the impression that Esther is planning to put them all in witches' bodies because in case I haven't said it yet, Vincent is a witch. So maybe it's not kill them so much as it's like make them stop being vampires. Finn wants to know why they hated him so much and sent him away. And you can tell he's kind of upset about that. I mean, I would be too. 900 years is a long freaking time. Klaus is like, you were annoying and you were a mama's boy and you got on my nerves too many times. So you had to go in the box. And Elijah is like, actually, you're way too much like Michael. And none of us liked dealing with your temperament and your anger and your like weird need to control all of us, which is just funny because you ended up with Klaus. And then Esther shows up. Lenore and Haley prepare to do the spell and I love Lenore. It's like I said a minute ago, she is so fun. I love her voice, I love her energy, I love the actress. There's something about her vibe that is just, to me, she's perfect. She is honestly probably my favorite witch we've seen in the original so far. Like I, I love her. So she does a soul brand spell on Esther, which basically means like she's gonna mark Esther so that whatever body she hops into next will have a mark on their hand. Haley makes a comment about like wondering what would make Esther do all of this and go through all this trouble. And Lenore is like, mm, love, dude. That's the only thing that makes you crazy enough to act like this. Esther tells the boys that everything she's ever done was to protect them. We see a flashback of Klaus having dueled with Michael and he ends up getting stabbed to the tree, like sword through the shoulder into a tree, he's stuck on the tree. 
Esther comes running to find him. She asks, why did they fight? What happened? He says he just wanted to prove himself to Michael. And then Michael was like, I'm going to take your stupid starling necklace from you that your mother made you because you're a mama's boy. I'm going to take it from you when I beat you. And then like they fought, the necklace got torn off. Klaus is holding it and then he's able to like cut Michael like he hits him hard enough that he cuts him and then Michael comes at him and stabs him and like you know puts him in the tree but he's like I got the necklace though mom like I wasn't gonna let him take it from me. Klaus says he's proud because he's glad that he didn't let him win like by taking the necklace and Esther is like I I'm gonna have to kill my husband. Like she's, you can see that she's like worried about it and scared because this is when like it really becomes obvious that like Michael is a problem. Like he's been abusing Klaus the whole time, but he literally soared through the shoulder into a tree. Like I, what the hell? Turns out though, the necklace wasn't spelled to protect him. It was spelled to keep him weak so that she could hopefully help him avoid ever killing anybody, therefore never triggering his werewolf curse. At the dinner table, Esther just passes out dead in Cassie's body. The boys then try to attack Finn, but he knocks them out with spells because he's a witch and gets away. In front of Haley, Lenore stops her spell and is acting really weird. She's like bent over the table and like not lifting her head up. And Haley's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And Lenore goes, oh, I'm just getting my bearings. And then we see the mark on her hand. So Esther is now in Lenore's body. I'm so mad, y'all. I gotta stop getting attached to witches. Damn, every time they get taken from me. <laughs> Cassie did not die though. She got put back into her body. So she like wakes up with the boys and Klaus is like, I'm gonna kill her for helping Esther. And Elijah's like, she didn't mean to help her. She was possessed. Elijah calls Haley and Lenore's like, go ahead and answer. Haley does. And she's like, Elijah, I'm with Lenore at her shop. And then Lenore cuts the phone off and is like, mm, that's enough of that. Esther tells her that she's planning on them coming for her. That's the whole point. Esther's really nice to Haley. And she says that the baby was like such a good thing for the family. And she was so excited. And now that the baby has gone. She feels so bad for them. And she's like, what if I put you in a new body so you don't have to be a hybrid anymore and you could have more children? The boys show up and she keeps them back with magic, saying that she only wants to heal them. Haley is able to run away, so it's just the boys and Esther in Lenore's body. She promises them that she only wants to undo what she did to them and tells them to talk to Haley about it because Haley knows the truth. The shop starts exploding around them and then birds fly through the windows and she's able to escape. Haley, back at the house, is actually considering the whole body swap situation because she's like, maybe it would be nice to have more children. Klaus confides in Elijah about how upset he is that his mom made him weak and that was what was wrong with him. And Elijah is like, brother, you are the fiercest of all of us, okay? No one stands against you and lives. And I just, it's just not true. <laughs> It's just not true. It's just, it's just not true. If you lined up the Michelson boys and you told me to pick the best fighter in the bunch, who is the strongest? I am only ever going to pick Elijah. I don't know what to tell you. He is so scary. <laughs> but it really means a lot to Klaus. And he says that the rest of the family could really learn a lot from Elijah. So yay, Elijah goes out and finds Gia. She was a musician before she transitioned, but now she's finding it really hard to play. And remember, he taught Marcel how to play the piano. So we know Elijah can also play instruments. And he explains that like transitioning changes so much and like the way they hear music is different. The way like they interact with sound is different just in general. So it's gonna take time, but she can learn it again and find the joy in it again. She's touched that he understands what she's going through and realizes, oh my God, he found something to fix. He's gonna work with me. She asks him, why is he helping her now? And he says, because if somebody had done this to me and my siblings, I think history would be different. Esther meets with Finn. And he's like, okay, mom, next steps, what are we doing here? And she's like, I sowed the seeds, right? Like now they're gonna think about things and they're gonna come to me when they need more. Plan moving forward is to poison everything they know and love. So just systematically take away all the good in their lives. And then when they're really miserable and sick of it, they'll come to her and ask her for help. And because she loves them so much, she'll give it to them. Josh 
is talking to somebody online and I was deeply concerned from the jump. I was like, he's being catfished. He's being catfished, he's in danger, this is gonna end horribly. While he's talking to Marcel about how he's really afraid about meeting this cute guy, cause he's like, I'm a vampire, what then? Werewolves attack. They bite one of Marcel's new men. Gia's really badass in this moment. She's like, what are you doing? Knock it off. The wolves say that they're taking back the fact that Marcel can live like at the outskirts of the city. They need to leave entirely or they're cooked. Cammie's meeting with Finn, who she thinks is Vincent, and like talking to him about her life and her studies. He's basically like mentoring her for like the end of her uh, college stuff. But really he's just tricking her into telling him everything about Marcel and Klaus. She talks about Marcel a little bit and does admit that she knows she was a rebound. So that made me feel better. I was like, at least she knew. And then she says like, what happened with Klaus was so complicated, but like she knows he's a bad man, but she really, really saw good in him too. And she wanted to save him, but some people just don't wanna be saved. Elijah and Haley get into it and it's getting heated. Like they're fighting so much right now. I don't know how we're gonna get back to a good place there. Davina is hiding out in the woods at like her family's cabin. Cause all these people got family cabins in the woods. That's where she is. Michael's in the yard training with a staff. Klaus runs into Cami on the street. She's on the phone with Davina, right? They're checking in with each other. She's trying to find out where Davina is, how she's doing. He listens in on the conversation and figures out because he's, you know, centuries old vampire, exactly where Davina is. And is like, I know where she's at her family cabin. I'm gonna go get her. And he literally pulls the same shit he did on Caroline where he's like, oh, but I'm evil. You better help me or I'll be forced to kill her. And so Cami goes with him because she doesn't have any other options. Esther's trying to find Davina too with a locator spell, but even with Cole's help, she can't do it. Davina is somehow blocking her. What, are, what do you, what do you mean Davina's blocking her? Davina's a 16 year old girl. You are a centuries old witch and you can't beat that spell. That doesn't make any sense. Finn and Cole at each other's throats, just ying, 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 ying. Esther's sick of it, I'm sick of it. Why can't any of these freaking siblings get along? Michael's pissed. And he's out there training in the yard because like, I think he got bitten. Mm, yes, I think he got bitten. It's not gonna kill him. And instead of like suffering through it, he's been training through it to like burn off and like purge the venom. Sure, whatever, do what you gotta do. He tells Davina he thinks she's weak for not letting him go after Klaus. He reminds her that magic only gets her so far. And she was like bested during the fight, even with her spells. And so she tells him, Fine, make me strong. Gia and the other vampires kind of want to fight the wolves, but Marcel and Josh are both like, um, we don't really have the time for like a training montage. We have 24 hours to leave the city. I don't think it's a good idea. Elijah runs in and snaps like four of their necks at once and then goes, mm, lesson one, always be on your guard. Finn gives a little speech to a group of very young werewolves. I'm talking teenagers and children. He says that it's a blood moon that night and way back when, their ancestors used to intentionally kill people on the blood moon to trigger their curse and become full werewolves. So that's what they're gonna do tonight. Doesn't that sound great? There is another wolf, it's Ollie and Aiden are like the two top wolves underneath Cassie's people, I don't know, it's fine. And Aiden is like, what are you talking about? They're kids, they can't do that. And Finn is like, mm, yes, they can and they will. We don't have time to coddle them anymore. It's time for war. Michael carves the Michelson crest into a staff for Davina so that they can train together. We learn he also had a terrible dad, but like I simply can't feel bad for him, right? Because he is so old. He's had so much time to grow and change and learn. And instead he's just still out here holding fast to the belief that we should beat our children. I just, I don't have time for that. He hurts her really badly while they're sparring and she like fricks up her ankle and she doesn't want to fight anymore. She's like, I'm done, I hurt myself. And he's like, get on your feet. And then she stands up like leaning on the staff and he's like, well, it looks like you learned something today. I don't like him at all. Let me be very clear there, don't like him. This was kind of a fun dynamic though. The scene was interesting. 
Cammie and Klaus were on their way to the cabin. She's now in a bar drinking. He comes in and he's like, wait in the car, Klaus. I'll just be a minute, Klaus. What are you doing? <laughs> she reminds him that like he forced her to come and very easily he could have like listened in on the phone call and just gone alone, but he wanted her to come with him because he wants to talk to her. So why don't they just get into why he wants to kill his father? And Klaus is like, hmm. It would be nice to talk about it. And he sits down with her to drink. Davina's ankle is messed up. Like, I think she broke something for sure, sees. So she calls Cole and she's like, baby, I know we haven't talked in a few days. Could you please come meet me at this address and bring me some supplies? And he's like, I got you, girl. I'll be right there. Elijah and Gia are sparring. He's teaching her how to fight solo while Marcel works with all the other vampires because he feels responsible for her. I really liked him with Haley, right? Like I was really starting to feel that and understand it and it was making sense to me. And now I'm seeing it with Gia and I'm just, I'm just a little confused. I also don't know where Jackson is. So is he gonna come back and be with Haley? Why did he not show up for the ending? Like where's he been? I don't remember. I feel like they probably told me and I just forgot. <laughs> But yeah, Elijah and Gia are fighting and with each attempted maneuver, she gets better at fighting him until finally she pins him up against the wall. And he's like, good job, now choose head or heart. And she's like, um, what do you mean? And he's like, you have to make the kill, head or heart. She shoves her hand into his chest and holds his heart. And he's looking at her and she's looking at him. And like, it, it was so charged. I was like, y'all, what is going on? <laughs> Haley shows up and she's also like, um, am I interrupting something? Like, what is this? Gia takes her hand out of his chest and then they're both just kind of like, um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so Haley brought Aiden and Ollie. Aiden has flipped on Cassie because his little brother is part of those teenagers that are being told to kill. And so he doesn't feel good about it and he's not gonna let it happen. So now they need Marcel and Elijah's help and Haley's help to like get the wolves and get out. Klaus tells Cammie about how uh, Esther wants to strip them of being vampires and turn them into a weird freaky coven instead, but really his focus is on killing Michael. He brought the Papa T knife. He's planning on using that. She tells him she understands what he's fighting against, but she can't figure out what he's fighting for, which I'm like, girly pop, he just wants to be loved. It's very simple. He's told you that many times. I know that his actions somehow, you know, make that feel a little convoluted and like he doesn't really mean it, but like he does. He desperately just wants community and family and someone to hold his hand and love him. So if that's not gonna be you, go ahead and move along because he needs it. Like I, I feel like she's gonna die, right? Because she's getting way too invested and emotional. And if they're not gonna date, she's out of here soon. Anyway, they dance and she tells him there's no real peace and revenge, which I don't agree with in all situations. And then they get real close and they hold each other and it feels like maybe he's gonna give in, but then he spins her and while she's spinning away from him, he leaves. Cole is fixing Davina's ankle. He makes a cute joke about how somebody clearly knocked her head over heels and he's a little upset because he thought he was gonna get to do that. Listen, it's really sweet and I like it a lot because Cole is like doing magic and he's doing magic that he learned like a long time ago, right? And it's cool to see him doing that and to see him kind of in his element with her. And I just wish that one time we could get a witch relationship that didn't start off with a lie, right? Because I know where this is going. This is gonna go somewhere that I like. I'm gonna be really invested and into it, but I'm gonna have to remember that the beginning of their relationship was all fake. It was all him trying to use her and her being naive and not realizing it. And I don't like that. But oh my God, he's so cute though. And he is like trying to get her to tell him, but also like he doesn't really pressure her. He ends up being like, don't worry about it. Tell me when you want to, okay? Not a moment before. Ollie freaks out when the plan to save the werewolf kids means that he's probably gonna get blamed for losing said werewolf kids. And Elijah is like, well, you wanted to atone, dumbass. So now's your chance. Again, he straight up murdered Eve. So I have like, I got nothing good to say about him. I don't care what he does now. The Eve murder is what tipped me over the edge. We're not coming back from that, I fear. Davina falls asleep and Cole explores the cabin. He finds the room where she's keeping Michael. He finds the white oak steak and he's like, oh, delicious. I'm taking that home with me. When he goes to grab it though, Michael shows up. He doesn't know it's Cole though, right? So he's immediately like, give me one good reason not to kill you. And Cole is like, I'm a witch, broski. I can, you know, 
take the spell off the bracelet and then you'll be free. Isn't that, isn't that what you want? She's controlling you. I don't know why. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you could possibly be doing here. Let me help. Plan to save the wolves happens. Ollie and Haley like spirit the kids through the streets. They go out through prohibition tunnels. It's giving TVD, whatever, very convenient. Josh is there, so he helps get them to Gia and Marcel. Ollie reports to Elijah, and then all the wolves that he was with follow him, so now they're all there with them. Turns out, Esther sent the wolves after Elijah, and Elijah is like, oh, okay, and he takes his jacket off, and he's like, I promised my friend that I would do everything in my power not to hurt you, right? But if you don't leave right now, this whole situation is gonna get really awkward really quickly. They square up on him and he's like, all right, well, this will be fun. Ollie stays and fights with him because he's, you know, proving his worth. Josh and Haley get the kids out. They get them to Marcel and Gia and then Aiden is there so he gets to see his little brother. It's very cute. We cut back to Ollie and Elijah, just straight covered in blood. The wolves are utterly decimated. Like Ollie is ripping one of their arms off as we come back into the scene. But then Finn shows up and attacks. Elijah gets the upper hand and nearly kills him. Like he is about to kill him when Esther shows up and stakes Elijah and uses magic on him so he goes down finally. But again, this is my point. It takes so much to knock him on his ass. Like it is nearly impossible to do. Back at the cabin, Cole sneaks in and tries to steal the bracelet from Davina, but she wakes up. Cammie has texted her warning that Klaus is coming. So they run into the living room and do a cloaking spell. Klaus shows up and he's like walking around the house, but he can't see them. Michael sees Klaus through the doorway, like through the window, but Klaus doesn't know he's there. He's all the way back to the car when he stops and is like, wait a second, she's a witch. I bet this is a trick. So he turns around. Sure enough, he sees the Michelson staff, like with the little crest carved into it. He takes that, he throws it through the window, knocks Davina unconscious, the spell breaks. He doesn't know that Caleb is actually Cole. So he's not phased by seeing him in there, but he's like, Davina, come out and play with me. It's time, give me Michael. Michael then forces Cole to take the bracelet off of Davina. So he does so freeing Michael and then he goes outside to face Klaus. Oh, it's a good fight. Let me tell you, they're flipping around, they're fighting, they're rolling around on the ground. Michael gets Klaus pinned and right when you think he's gonna stake him, Klaus like pushes him off and he goes flying. Then they just end up fist fighting without the stake. They're just punching each other in the face. Michael gets the upper hand again, but when he goes to stake him, Klaus like wiggles out of the way and he stabs him in the side instead of in the heart. I think actually, yeah, the sword goes through here. So he stabs him with the stake on this side. So he's been stabbed both sides of his chest, but not his heart by his dad. That's very upsetting. Somebody had to do that on purpose. Michael then like goes to rear back and do it again, but Klaus gets the Papa T knife into his chest. So he collapses. Then Klaus like gets to his feet while Michael is like screaming in pain, but he doesn't really look proud. He just looks sad. Cammie comes running in looking for Davina and it's really funny. She's like super out of breath. And he's like, what are you gonna do? Have a heart attack right in front of me? Like get it together. And she's like, you abandoned me at the bar and I had to hitchhike and then run, okay? I've been in the middle of the freaking bayou at night, bro. Don't fuck with me right now. And then she tells him that he better not hurt Davina. He gives her his word, which is really cute. And then they hug. Then she sees Michael and she's like, what's going on here? What is this? And he's like, oh, I put the Papa T knife in him. So he's in horrible agony and I'm going to keep him like that forever. Josh is at the bar getting ready to meet with his mystery boy and drum roll, please. It's Aiden, the new werewolf. So now they have like a Romeo and Juliet situation going on, but they decide that for this night, at least they're just going to have fun and be themselves and not worry about anything else. Your bite could kill him, very easily. Like you accidentally get a little too excited, you're screwed. We saw it happen with Tyler and Caroline. We know it can be done. I'm not sure I feel good about it, but they are really cute. I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad Josh is happy. Like good for him. Haley, Gia, and Marcel are sharing a drink to celebrate, but Gia is like super worried about Elijah. She's like, I don't know where he is. I don't feel good about this. And Haley's like, girl, don't worry about it. Okay. He is going to be fine. Nothing's wrong. We don't need to be worried at all. Girl, girl, he's not fine. He is not okay. Klaus loads Michael's body up into the trunk of his car. And then we're in the trunk with Michael and he wakes up and pulls the Papa T knife out of his own chest because remember 
pain doesn't phase him. I'm sure that'll be fine though. Like he's probably not even that mad, right? Elijah wakes up in chains in the crypt, much like what him and Haley did to Genevieve. He's surrounded by candles though. I'm talking hundreds hundreds of candles. Every available surface is covered with candles. And Esther is there. She tells him she wants to be a family again. And she's so sorry. But in order for that to happen, he needs to be purified. Then she just leaves him there. Oh, do you see what I mean about being back? Like, I'm feeling really good about this season so far. Mostly, I'm just glad Cole is here. Like, I love him. This is one of my favorite guys from Teen Wolf. So getting him as Cole makes it just makes me so happy. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you so soon. Have a good one. Bye.